how do we find and read journal articles and ebooks at the Mount Library? Uh, as you know, if you've been to the Mount Library, you've seen a bunch of books on the shelves. Wonderful. You can take a book out, uh, take it to the front desk, and take it home with you. But how do you do that digitally? We're going to find out today. So we are going to talk about um, access. We're going to talk about downloading. And we're also going to quickly discuss strategies for effective reading and note taking um, of those digital materials. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is using library resources. I'm just going to expand my screen a little bit. And OK, this is the Mount Library homepage. So just like walking into the Mount building, you can also digitally walk into our building by using the Mount Library homepage. And what's great about our homepage is it actually acts as a portal into all of our physical and digital holdings and also things like books and videos and so on and so forth. So um, if you hear someone talking behind me, just know that I'm in my office right now. It's a little bit loud, so sorry about that. Now on this page, right in the center, underneath where it says find articles, journals, books, videos, and more, that's literally the spot to find all of those things. So beside where it says Novanet Discovery, there's a search box, and you just like enter in your search terms into that search box. If you want to find out what you have out physically, you can click on Check or Renew My Loans or you can click on advanced search. If you know the title of the journal that you want to get an article from, we have a listing of all our journal titles from A to Z, um, databases, all of those things. But that little box right in the middle of the page where it says find journals, articles, books, videos, and more, that is literally your portal. Imagine just diving into that box and accessing everything that we have here at the Mount. So that's where you need to go is the Mount Library homepage uh, to start your journey. Now, I want to talk a little bit about definitions so we're all on the same page. We we're talking about accessing journals, but what is that? What is a journal? Um, a journal is an academic publication. It usually contains articles about academic research, but also there's editorials and book reviews in there. It's kind of like a magazine for academics. So a, a journal is like a magazine. It looks like a magazine. If we could see the print copy, it would look exactly like that. But the difference is that the articles in that journal are peer reviewed. What that means is those articles have been thoroughly checked for accuracy by subject matter experts in the field. So if it's a science journal, other scientists are reading those articles before they get published to make sure that they're correct. A database is a digital repository of journal articles, books, and other types of materials. Oh, sorry if you lost my screen there. I'm just going to put a do not disturb on my computer because I'm getting notifications. I don't think you can see them, but they're annoying me. Now, databases are digital repositories of journal articles, books, and other types of materials like newspaper articles and government information. So a database is a bigger repository. It's kind of like when we think about a magazine as like a journal. Um, a database is like a magazine store. So you can go in there and find a bunch of different resources from a bunch of different journals. Um, now, databases can be multidisciplinary or specific. Multidisciplinary means that the database has information about all kinds of things, education, science, medicine, psychology, sociology, history, English, uh, everything's in there. Uh, but there are also specific databases, and you can use those to search for very specific subject areas like education, for example, or even early childhood development or medicine. So choosing where you start your search is a good way to limit the number of results that you get. But I just wanted to let you know, like, what does this mean, a journal? A journal is an academic publication. They used to be published in print, and we actually have print journals down in the basement of the Mount Library, but now they're all digital. So everything that we access that's new in the world of journals, um, even though they might still publish in print, the library is subscribing to those digitally. Now, what's an ebook? An ebook is a digital book. Uh, depending on the publisher, the ebook might look exactly like a print book, or it might be interactive like a web page. I've seen all kinds. Uh, but that format is uh, determining how you can access the ebook. Some ebooks can only be downloaded to your computer, um, while some of them can only be read in a web browser, and some of them you have a choice of reading them either way. It really depends on the publisher and not the library, unfortunately. Now, an ebook is different from a journal article in that there is a loan period for borrowing that book. Even though it's a digital resource, um, 
you can only use it for a certain amount of time. So eventually you won't be able to access that ebook. Even if you download it to your computer, the access will be gone. Uh, and that's something called digital rights management that controls that. So we may have a physical and digital copy of a book, but sometimes we only have one or the other. You can borrow, as a Mount student, you can borrow physical books from other libraries across Nova Scotia, but with ebooks, you can only borrow them from the Mount. So if you see, uh, and we're going to go into a search in a moment, if you see that there's an ebook available at another university, unlike a book, you can only uh, access ebooks from the Mount itself. So that's just the nature of the publishing game and the environment that we're in. So here's a blown out photo of this Novanet search box from the library webpage that I was talking about before. You can search our whole catalog by using the search bar, uh, which means you're searching through all of the books, ebooks, databases, journals, and materials, everything that we have here in the Mount Library, as well as things that other libraries across Nova Scotia have. So what I like to do is click on the advanced search um, in this box, but you can just type right in the box. And I'm going to show you an example of that shortly. So this is just a description of exactly what that looks like and what happens when you get the screen. Now, uh, one last thing I want to tell you about is uh, during this presentation, you totally forget everything that I'm saying and what is an ebook and how do I use the library's resources. We have a bunch of things called LibGuides here in the library that will help you step-by-step uh, -step instructions access things in the library. Um, and they are at these ad addresses. You can also access them on the main page of the library. I'm going to go back to my last slide. No, it's not on that one, where it says uh, Guides A to Z. Um, and I'll show you that again when we go live. But these two pages will give you step-by-step -step instructions and in all kinds of things, not just about what we're talking about today. And they are available uh, for you at any time, even when the library is closed. We are here for you. Now, how do we download journal articles and ebooks? Um, basically, from the library homepage, I like to go click on the link that says Advanced Search and enter my search terms in here. So I'm going to do this live, but I'm just showing you uh, for future reference uh, in this recorded webinar the important places on the search term or the search page to look. So just give me one second while I switch my screen and pull out uh, a screen so we can go live to the library webpage. Just going to take me a second here. Okay, so I just need to share my other screen with you. So just give me one second. I'm going to stop sharing and start sharing again. So you're going to see a quick change in your screen here. And just give me a second to get my application sharing going uh, with Google Chrome. Share. Oh, I'm slowing down. Just give me a second here, everybody. The computer wants me to talk a little bit slower and take a drink of water. Does anyone have any questions while I'm waiting for this? So you said ebooks are only found on the website, the Mount website. On the Mount Library website, yes. Yeah. So I'm just my computer is doing a little bit of a freeze right now. So hopefully we can get to the page that we want to get to. I'm hoping you can still hear me if you want to put, I can't even see in the chat window if you're responding. So I might have to dip out of this room and dip back in. Oh, when you, even when you prepare for things. It just says application sharing has stopped. Yeah, like it's just my computer is totally frozen. So I'm glad that you can still hear me. I'm getting like a rainbow wheel. So I think I'm going to have to leave the session and then come back in because I've totally frozen. Yeah, my computer is not responding. So don't worry, we're going to get through the rest of the session in half an hour and you're all going to be experts. So please, thank you so much for your patience. I'm totally frozen here. The joys of teaching through technology. I will be right back. And we're back, everyone. Sorry about that. So I'm just going to share my screen again here. And please work. 
There we go. Okay, so this is the Mount Home page. Oh, I'm seeing a question. Do you know if we will be able to print journal? Um, yes, you can print journal. So we're going to take a look at that right now. The first thing that we're going to do, uh, let me look at my presentation here, is take a look for a journal and I will show you exactly where uh, you can print it. So that's a really great question and um, thanks for asking. So we're going to go through that whole thing right now. So basically, I have a class uh, where I need to learn about someone named Marshall McLuhan. And I need to search the library uh, databases or resources for an article to find out how to start my search. Uh, what I'm going to do is click on this advanced search button on the li Mount Library homepage. And it's going to bring me to something called Novanet. Novanet, um, if you can tell by the title, is the Nova Scotia Consortium of University Libraries. So this means that when you search through Novanet, you can actually search uh, through a whole bunch of other university libraries in Nova Scotia to see uh, books and other types of resources that you might be able to access. So that's pretty fun. Now, what I want to do, since I'm searching for a journal article in Novanet, is change right here in this dropdown where it says resource type. I'm just going to show that again. So right here in this dropdown, resource type to articles. I only want journal articles. And then I'm just going to do a general search for the name McLuhan and see what happens because I would need to write a paper about this guy and I don't know anything about him. So I'm going to do a search and the search is working and whoa, we get a lot of results. So when we scroll down here, um, you can see uh, right at the very top, it says page one, 4,526 results. So I might need to, uh, you know, put some, some more uh, specific search terms in here if I want to find something very specific. Um, but if I just want to get a basic overview, I can just start clicking on some of these articles. Now what I want you to see right away is that each of these results is uh, segmented and they highlight when you mouse over them. And if I want to uh, refine my search a little bit, I can use this toolbar on the left side of the uh, Novanet search interface. So I, since I only selected articles in my initial search, that's the only uh, resource type I'm going to get. But say I only want to get peer-reviewed articles. My professor says you have to access peer-reviewed literature. I can click on that and make sure I'm pressing apply filters on the bottom. And then I'll do the search again. And that way I'm only going to get journals that are peer-reviewed because not all journals are peer-reviewed. So I still have about 3,496 results. Let's scroll down and take a look at one more filter and I want to filter by subject. So let's say I'm interested in McLuhan's views and information on technology. So I'm just going to click on that, and then I can uh, limit my results a little bit. So that's a really fun way to uh, have less reading to do. So this sounds like a really good article, the very first one, The Mythology of McLuhan. Sounds like something that I can read to learn about the person that I need to write a paper about. So I'm going to click on that record and it's going to open up a screen here in the middle that gives me more information about the journal article that I might want to read. Uh, I can scroll down and see if there's anything else. I can take a look at the uh, citation and what that might look like in the specific citation style that I want to use for my paper. Um, and I can take a look at when it was published or where it was published and some other information down here. But since it looks like something that's really interesting for me to read, I'm just going to go ahead and click on this link that says full text available. Any resource that has a link that says full text available will be able to be accessed from your computer. Now, when you're working on your computer at home, you might at some point in this process uh, experience a screen just like this where you have to log in. Um, and don't be afraid. Just log in with your Mount username and password or your email and password. I'm going to stop talking while I type in my incredibly long password.
the reason why I'm getting this screen is because I'm using my laptop. So even though I'm on campus, the library needs to know that I'm a registered student here or registered staff uh, so I can access this copyrighted material. Here I come to a different screen that really just has all the same information as the last screen did, but it's displaying it in a slightly different way. And all I want to do is click on this link on the left here that says PDF full text. That's a link to the article that I can then save, download, print, or even read just in the browser. Here it is. Oh, and it was written by someone at the University of Alberta, and that's where I did all my school. That's pretty neat. So how do I save this article? I can press and just know that what, depending on the browser you use, you might see something slightly different, but they will all have exactly the same functionality. Uh, for this particular one, I just come here to this little link in the top right-hand corner. The arrow with the line underneath it is where I can save it, and the printer is where I can print it. Um, printing from home this way will be really easy, but just so you know, if you're using one of the computers in the library, we have experienced a little bit of funniness with printing directly from this page, so it's always a good idea to save the article and then print it, rather than printing it directly. Now, I want to quickly talk a little bit, so I'm going to share my screen again here. I'm just going to share my whole desktop, and then I can, like, go uh, through everything. Okay, great. So I uh, am going to go back to my presentation, and I want to talk a little bit about saving and uh, the ways that we can organize our saving of materials. So this is how we did the search, resource type, articles, great. Um, this is for a different article that I found that looked really cool when I was creating this presentation, but full text available is what we want to click on to download that article. Then we get to this link here. Uh, where it tells us where we need to go. And sometimes the screen will give you a few different download links um, because that corresponds to the database that you've requested. Just click on one of them um, and you'll get to where you need to go. Now, it's important to remember, uh, like I said, that the web page might look different depending on which database you're using. You just need to scan to find that download PDF button that we saw. Um, I'm going to go back and show you it on this one, but sometimes the databases look slightly different, and it would we could talk all day about the different design um, characteristics of all the different databases, um, but all you need to know is that if you see a link that says PDF full text, that's the link that's going to get you uh, to the resource that you want to get to, no matter what the page looks like. But the most important thing is to save the PDF in a location that you can find it again and give it a name that makes sense. You can give it whatever name you want. I'm going to share with you my system. So I use a system uh, that uses the author's last name with an underscore, the first word in the article with an underscore, and then the year of the publication. That way I'm not just saving, you know, if I'm doing a research on McLuhan, I don't have 15 articles called McLuhan's 1 through 15. Um, not terribly helpful. So it's really good to be systematic about where you save things and what you name them. Just saving them uh, in a random download folder with a name that says untitled, uh, it's really going to slow down your research. So think before you save and give it a name that makes sense to you. I can't stress that. I can't stress that enough. For this particular article, which is different than the other one that I found, the author's last name is Chun. The first name of the article title is Marshall, and it was published in 2014. That way, I can find this later and uh, sort through uh, what I've saved for my research uh, in a, you know, in a smart way. It's called research, not research. We don't want to redo our searches for things over and over and over. We only want to do them once. So that is how we download a journal from the Mount web page. Does anyone have any questions before we go on to looking at ebooks? I'm taking a look at the chat right now. Does anyone have any questions about how to download a journal, how to print a journal, how to save a journal? We'll take one more look at the journal article here. And in the top corner, uh, when it loads, I can either read this article all the way through in the browser, 
or print and save from the top right. Okay, I'm not seeing any questions, so I'm going to move on. All right, ebooks. Now let's go very, we're going to go right back to the beginning uh, and do the same thing all over again for ebooks. So I'm right back on the library's homepage here. I want now, after I've done my research on Marshall McLuhan, I think he seems like a pretty cool guy. I want to find a book that he wrote and see if I can read an ebook about him. I'm going to click on the advanced search because my research has given me a good idea of the books that he's written. Um, though you can use this advanced search to uh, search for less information if you don't have all the information. So when it loads, eventually, here we go. I'm going to change my search. Instead of searching for articles, I'm going to scroll up and search for books, which will re re like constrain my search so I only get one type of resource. And we can have a lot of power in the search interface to really tailor the search for what we want. I know the author that I'm searching for is named McLuhan, so I'm going to use this dropdown and say that the author contains the name McLuhan. McLuhan. Um, and I can even use this as exactly McLuhan, and then I'll only get results for that. And I'm going to use the next search field to also search for the title of the book. And I know that the title of the book that I want is Understanding Media. So if I only had his name as an author, I could just search for that too. It's totally up to you how many search terms. If I had a, another search term that I wanted to use, I could just add a new line and put it in there and just keep going and going. I haven't tested how many it'll let me do yet, actually. I should do that. So when I search, now I only get three results because I've been so exact with my search terms. And here we go. I get three results. Um, one is in French, so that's fun if you uh, speak French and you would like to read the book in another language. It exists there. Here's a, a book that is written by McLuhan and has two of my search terms, but it's not exactly the book that I wanted. And look, here is the first book. Uh, that's the one I want. I want to read the book by the man himself. So I click on the record, and then what happens when I can eventually scroll down, um, but it's given me seven results that are all the same. Why is it giving me so many different results? Because these books are all available at different libraries. So the first one says online access. The second one says available at Mount St. Vincent University, and there's alphanumeric code after it, that code P90M26, that tells me where to find the physical book on the shelf. I want to read the ebook. And these other ones say available at other NovaNet libraries, but I know that I can't borrow ebooks from other libraries, so I'm going to click on the very first one, and I'm just going to click on this link, online access. Takes me again to the screen that gives me some more information. And then I see this list that says view online. Oh, I'm seeing a question here. Are we able to go to other libraries or just request books from them? Not for ebooks. Not for ebooks. That's a good question. And we can only borrow ebooks from the university that we are registered students at. Physical books, absolutely. You don't even have to go to another library. You can just get them through something called document delivery. Um, I wish I had more time to talk about that today. We're only talking about ebooks, but physical books, yes, you can get from all over the province, from the country, and even from the world through document delivery. Um, and it's all you have to do is uh, on this screen, do you see where it says document delivery? When there's a book that's available and uh, it says available at other NovaNet libraries, like in the screen before, document delivery is going to get you that book. Um, and there's a great resource on that in the help guide. So uh, come down and see us at the library if you want more information on that, or you can just uh, Google it in our LibGuides. Now we see this list of viewing the book online. Um, and it says check for full text access restricted. So we have the Mount, we have SMU, DAL, we have Cape Breton, um, we have uh, NSCC and ACAD users only. Uh, I'm assuming that's an ASCAD. I'm not exactly sure what that ACAD is. Um, so we know that we're students at the Mount, so the only one that's going to work for us is this one. Now it's going to take us 
uh, to a similar screen that we already saw with a couple different options on it. And these options are important. I'm just going to go back to my slide and talk about those quickly before we actually uh, do it live. So this is just what we went through. The resources that we found, we want to click on the one with online access because the one that says available at Mount St. Vincent University is the one that's available physically on the shelf. So if you want to read it that way, you can. Um, here is where we see that we cannot borrow ebooks from other libraries. We can only borrow them from the Mount, so we need to click on that link. And then here is where we see a screen that I want to describe a little bit more in detail before we go through it. Now, many of our ebooks are distributed by EBSCO, which is a database. Um, so to download the ebook to your device, you'll need to register for an account with EBSCO. And this account is different from your MSVU login information. Oh, thanks, Acadia. Thank you for letting me know that that's Acadia. I did not know. Um, so you must use your MSVU email address when you register for this EBSCO account because that's how they know that you're a student at the Mount. And I recommend signing up for this online. It's a lot easier than using the EBSCO app. I went through it yesterday and it was a pain. Um, and if the ebook is not with EBSCO, the process will be very similar to this one. But like I said, I can, we could just talk all day about all the different interfaces. So to download the book, before you download the book, um, and it's going to prompt you, you need to create this EBSCO host account. Um, so I'm going to go back to that page, and I'm going to click on download this ebook offline. So I want to read it on my computer, and then you get into this sign into my EBSCO host account. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Uh, but you can also, it gives you the opportunity to create a new account here. And the funny thing is I'm still using my UAlberta account. I'm going to try the Mount one. Um, if I can remember the password that I, I can't remember the password. That I'm sorry, I want to get through this quickly. So it still seems to be using my UAlberta information, and that works somehow. I'm not exactly sure. Um, so when you log in, you're authenticating also with EBSCO. Oh, no, it's not letting me now. I have this on a slide, so for the sake of time, I'm just going to walk through it on the slide. Um, so also to download the ebook, you need to install a free program called Adobe Digital Edition. Uh, and this will allow you to open the file that you'll be prompted to save to download the ebook. So the next thing that you'll see when you sign in to this EBSCO account is this download this ebook, check out and download. And you can see here it shows that it gives you a checkout period of seven days only. So it's a very short loan for this digital version. And if you don't have Adobe a digital, digital edition, in the bottom of the pop-up it gives you a link. Uh, that you can use to click and download. It's free, it's Adobe, it's a trusted product, um, and you're going to need it if you want to read digital books online. Uh, there's also an, uh, an Apple or an Android app. So that's very important. There's many steps that you need to go through before you can download an ebook, but you only need to do that once. Just make sure you remember your uh, EBSCO password. So uh, I recommend writing it down or saving it in a place that's really helpful for you. So once you do all of those things and download the book, um, you're going to get a file download uh, called, what, what's the name of the file, urllink.acsm. There's no need to rename this file or store it in a secure place like you do with a journal article because once you open it in Adobe Digital Editions, it's totally accessible from there always. Here's a screenshot of my Adobe Digital Edition box. And uh, you can see that I've downloaded a bunch of different books on Adobe Digital Editions, including the one in the bottom right corner, the one that we're talking about today. And uh, some of them say expired, and some of them, uh, the very last one says six days. And that means that I have the book for six more days. And then uh, after six days, that expired thing is going to turn on, and I won't be able to access the book again. I'll have to go through the um, checking it out process digitally again. So just know that that's how they deal with the, um, the loan period. It's through a digital lock on the product, and it'll just 
automatically um, expire from your computer and there really is no way to actually physically download or save the book for yourself. And I just want to point out that breaking the digital lock is uh, contravening the Copyright Act and uh, you're not allowed to do that. So please don't break the digital locks if you, uh, it's very hard to do, but um, it's not a good idea. You can take out these books as many times as you want from the Mount Library. Okay, does anyone have any questions about that process? Remembering that you can watch this webinar again as many times as you need, and we also have a LibGuide about how to do this as well. So, um, if you want to download it to your device, you can go to the Apple or Android store and download the EBSCO eBook app. Uh, this is screenshots from my iPhone. I'm sure it looks very similar on an Android. You go to your app store, download EBSCO eBooks. It's free. Then um, at the bottom of the app, when you open the app, you click on Find Books, and it'll prompt you to find your library uh, by selecting country, province, and institution. Then you'll have to sign in with the EBSCO host account that you hopefully already created online because doing it through the app is quite difficult. And then you can just download the book, search for the book that you want, and download it and read it on your device um, just that way. So uh, it's possible on your Apple or your Android device to do that. Now, uh, another way that you can read ebooks is by accessing them online, uh, which means that you can just look at it in the web browser. And in all honesty, this is way uh, easier to do, but some people don't like to read in the browser. Uh, that's why I showed you the more convoluted way first, and then I'm just going to show you this way second. We'll just go back to the results here. Oh, it wants me to sign in. I'm just going to go back to here and just access that record again so I can show you. So, reading this book in the browser, all we need to do is click on EPUB full text. And then it just, you don't even need to sign in at all. You can if you want to, but you don't need to. And then here's the whole book, like right in the browser. On the left-hand side are the different chapters. Um, let's look at this one, Roads and Paper Routes. And then it's just the book um, displayed in HTML. So this is another really easy way to read eBooks. And if you like reading in the browser, um, you can go right ahead and access it that way. You can zoom out if you want. You can make the text bigger. Um, you can copy and paste. You can do all kinds of things. You can print individual pages, but just know that it knows how many pages you're printing, and there's a limit on how many pages you'll actually be able to print from the resource. But you can print pages, email pages, save pages, etc. cetera. Um, so that gives you slightly different functionality uh, if you prefer to read in the browser. Or if you want to download it, uh, we just went through the steps before. Those are creating a EBSCOhost account, downloading Adobe Digital Editions, and then downloading that book um, to your computer to read however you want. So now in our last eight minutes, we're going to breeze through some reading strategies. Uh, so I hope you're ready to have your mind blown because I think I'm going to just change a lot of people's perspectives on reading journal articles specifically. So here we go. Now, I want to talk first about reading strategies that don't work. So uh, I did some research of my own on this, and I found that uh, these guys, Denlowski et al., conducted a systematic review of study strategies used by university students, and they found that highlighting and rereading textbooks and articles is not as effective as other study strategies, such as taking practice tests and using a distributed practice method of studying. So I'm not trying to say that you shouldn't highlight, and if that's the way that you do it, do it, but these guys found um, that it really does little to boost your retention. So if you're like me and you never highlight and you always wondered if you should, um, you don't have to. So that's an interesting research that I did to prepare for this. They found that it doesn't work. I'm not trying to say how you should read or not, but you might want to think about how you can maximize your time here in university. Reading strategies that do work, distributed practice. So according to the same researchers, uh, distributed practice is the act of distributing learning over time either within a single session or across sessions. And they found that 
spacing out your study intervals between 1 and 30 days led to greater knowledge retention, and the benefit was honestly greater following a longer gap in the time between sessions. So that means cramming isn't the best way to learn the material that you need to learn. Another thing that has been valuable, which kind of uh, is similar to distributed practice is something called the Pomodoro method, which is a time management technique that involves uh, breaking down your reading sessions or your study sessions into chunks. So you can use a timer, set it for 25 minutes, focus your energy entirely during that 25 minutes, and then take a five minute break. After you do that four times, take a longer break. Um, it's similar to distributing your studying, it's only on a smaller scale. So definitely the research shows that. Um, Taking breaks is a really good idea when you're studying. It helps you remember. Um, so for all you people that take video game breaks while you're studying, good on you. Now, I want you all to stop the madness because when you read a journal article, you do not read it like a book from start to finish. That is not a good way to read a journal article. That is not how you read journal articles. So if you've been feeling like you are reading Greek, um, you're not alone. Journal articles are weird and they're hard to read. So I'm going to just breeze through this really quickly, and I invite any of you that want more information to email me or come into the library to talk about this. Every academic journal article has the same basic ingredients. They start with an abstract, which is a concise summary of the entire article, even the results. It's not a mystery novel. It, it's going to tell you the ending right at the beginning. Um, so if you don't know if you need to read a journal article or if it'll be helpful for you, read the abstract. Sometimes that's all you need to read and then you can move on. Then if the abstract sounds interesting, look at the introduction and background. But I need you to know that this section usually contains the justification for the project. And what it's going to contain is a lot of inline citations that describe other people's research. What they're doing is telling you why they know what they're talking about when it comes to what they did. So they need to set the stage with a whole bunch of references that they already have looked into and describe all the research that they already did. Um, so often the introduction of the background section is very difficult to read because it's really just referencing other people's work. The next section uh, will generally be the methods or the methodology, and it's an incredibly detailed explanation of the re research methods. Sometimes there's a lot of statistics or scientific language. It can be very technical and hard to understand. Um, but if any research that's being done, the researchers need to describe how they did what they did, and that's going to be in this section. The next one will be the results, which is honestly just a direct reporting of what they did uh, when they did the method. So there'll be charts, tables, graphs. These are interesting to look at, but this section will just be direct result reporting, uh, again, with more statistics or scientific language. Now, the discussion section is always near the end, and it's probably the most valuable piece of the whole article because it has a synthesis and an explanation of everything that has come before it. They talk about their results, why the research that they already did was important, and what they think the results are telling them. So this is where you're going to get all the information that is the meatiest and the most quote-worthy for your research project. Then sometimes at the very end, there'll be a section called limitations or opportunities for further research. And this section just describes either what may have gone wrong or how, how something in their method limited the analysis of their results, or maybe what other researchers could do to continue their research. So how do we read a journal article? Here are some step-by-step -step instructions. Step number one, do not read the whole article like a book from start to finish. I can't stress that enough. You start by reading the abstract and assess whether or not the article is going to be useful for you. If it's not useful, move on. Do not read the whole article. Step three, using what you've just learned about the structure of a journal article on the last slide, uh, I want you to skim the article by reading the first sentence of every paragraph. That's right, just the first sentence. And if that sentence seems interesting, read the next one. And if it doesn't, move on. This is how people get through all the reading that they do in university. They do not read every single word. They're very judicious with their time, starting by the first sentence. The first sentence is going to tell you what's coming next. 
then I want you to pay special attention to the discussion section. This is usually where you're going to find the best quotes for your paper. This is going to have all the information written in a way that's very easy to understand. From there, you can go back into the article. and then going back into the paper and getting more information where you need it. Um, you may not need to do that, but you may. So it's really important to make the best use of your time. Finally, I want you to scan the citation list so you can find other articles of interest. Um, maybe there's something really interesting that you saw in the background or introduction that they talked about, and uh, you might need another article for your research paper. This is where you're going to find that. You can go back into our NovaNet search interface and search for the title and the author and find the article right away. This is how researchers find other research. They're not just discovering it on their own alone all the time. They're looking at what other people have done and mining their citations. Now, we don't have time for note-taking strategies, and I honestly anticipated that. So here's a link that I found from a website called Lifehacker. Um, they have a really great primer on note-taking techniques. Um, it's really great. There's so many note-taking techniques. People do it on the computer. People do it uh, in paper. Basically, if you need strategies for note-taking, Google note-taking strategies and try them and see what works. Now, this is the last slide. So I made it to the end. Uh, stop by the front desk of the library if you need any help with what we talked about today. Research help uh, is available at these times, um, even on the weekend. You can email us at library at msvu.ca, or you can even ask a question online at answers.msvu.ca, and one of us will get back to you uh, to um, figure out uh, the response to your question.